John and Betty Mack. We also welcome Mr. Paul Gay, president of uh, SPA. And Mr. Bernie Boone, president of Virginia Beach General Hospital. And since you all know I work for Sentara, there's a Sentara before each one of those. Uh, a very special thanks uh, to Town Bank. They have supported us with the cocktail hour every year and have done this for many years. So we do thank them very much. As well as the folks from Kaufman and Canoles for providing the dinner wine, and they've also supported us for many years. And if you notice the musicians tonight are rather familiar to this room. Uh, they're called Kind of Blue. You can see them at Thursday nights up at Hilltop. Dr. Tony Hart, Dr. Scott Warren, and Mr. Chris. How much people were eager to tell me about him. It was almost as though they had been waiting in the wings just to tell and retell John's stories. Along the way, I learned some interesting things about this man. He is truly an icon in the history of medicine in Virginia Beach. He was director of Virginia Beach General Hospital's pathology lab from the time he founded it in 1965 until he passed in 1996. He was instrumental in the hospital's early and continued success. He was chairman of the credentials committee and in that role he helped the medical staff applicants to unprecedented standards, demanding excellence from his fellow physicians. Additionally, he taught students at EBMS. He was past president of the Rotary Club, active in medical politics. He was an active fundraiser for the United Way, the Marine Science Museum, and the local rescue squad. Dr. Larry Smith, his partner, Recall that in 1990 was one of his favorite years. It was the year he was king of the Neptune Festival. <laughs> he enjoyed throwing candy and swag to the kids in the route of parade. I remember I was 16 and I was one of those kids cheering for him from the crowd. The common thread in the comments from people around the room, like his long-term partner, Dr. Smith, other colleagues like Dr. Bob Mosby and Dr. Andy Dickinson, is the important role that humor played in his life and his career. He had a razor-sharp wit. He was a man that was able to diffuse any tense situation with a bit of levity. When teased about his early balding, he responded, God gave each of us so much testosterone at birth. If you want to use yours to grow hair, that's your business. <laughs> he had charisma and charm. He had an easy manner about him that could endear people from every walk of life. He was adored by his staff in the pathology lab. He worked tirelessly and strove for excellence. What stands out to me most as a young physician, at least I like to still call myself a young physician, in reflections of his peers is that both John Kruger the man and John Kruger the doctor embodied what medicine once was and what medicine can be at its best. For better or worse, the world in which we practice medicine now is not the same as the environment in which he practiced. The medical staff itself, our connections with each other, and our relationship with administration are not once, what they once were. But at its core, our role as physicians is not so different today. So I challenge the audience, and myself for that matter, to remember Dr. Kruger as we go about our daily patient care. If we can channel his energy, his approach to medicine, and to the people around him, I think our medical community and our patients will benefit. 
As the memories of Dr. Kruger fade, let his spirit remain as an inspiration to us as physicians. I came back to this area, and this is school at Eastern Virginia Medical School. Like so many of the people we're honoring tonight and talking about tonight, she's become involved in social responsibility, becoming involved in Special Olympics, and taking on leadership roles in her community. And I hope that we're going to convince her with events like this to stay here locally. Congratulations. Maybe not after this fracture, but uh, 
and he was a world-class swimmer in high school, and he actually came in 12 in the Eastern Olympic Trials when he was in high school. That's not very shabby, is it? That's, that's pretty impressive. He went on to, to swim at University of Pittsburgh. He had a full scholarship there. And I don't know if any of you know the life of a swimmer in, in college, but it's incredible. It's very early morning, classes all day, study all night. It's, it's really demanding. Very, many people don't make it through. Mark made it through. And along with that, he was a biochemistry major. Rumor has it that his sister Judy and his and his mom used to show up just to get a little time with them. They lived near Pittsburgh, they lived in Pittsburgh or near Pittsburgh, and they would stop by and pick up his laundry and then return and just to have time to spend with Mark. He's also a long distance biker, and uh, he's he's won two Ironman. For those of you who don't know what Iron Ironman is, it's a combination of swimming, biking, and running. It's, it's pretty intensive. And for those of you who do know what Ironman is, you probably have heard of the, uh, the Ironman World Championship in Hawaii. No, Mark did not win that, nor did he get to that. But uh, rumor has it that he got close enough in his qualifications, but he got two flat tires on the bike ride and didn't make it to that, to that race. So Mike is, Mark is quite a biker. Um, he did tell me once, that he and his gang of guys go up, uh, Riding up on uh, up on up near Charlottesville, and he uh, came back after one trip, and he did tell me as he got older that my motorcycle started looking a lot better to him. <laughs> but if you ask Mark what he enjoys, it was teaching and coaching, and he's been able to do this over the years. He gives freely of his time, and he's been very very generous, more than most of us know. That's the other thing I like about Mark. He doesn't brag about a bunch of stuff. You sort of have to pull it out of him, or hear it from somebody else, because you're usually not going to hear it from Mark. Um, he coached swimming, he coached crew at Cox, he's uh, coached at the college level. He did get a new nickname this year. He, when Mark hurt himself, can I tell a story? I guess I can tell a story. Uh, I tell the story anyway. They were out on a, uh, uh, with the Cox crew team, and they were out on the lake uh, here in Virginia Beach. And, I, and Mark's a nice guy, so they were going to. They decided to go swinging on a on a rope. And Mark, you know, he was in charge of them, so Mark tried it out first and did just fine. And uh, then all the kids had their fun. And then Mark, unfortunately, tried it one more time, kind of like skiing that last slope at the end of the end of the day. And that's when he had his accident. But it also got him a new nickname. And uh, I have to be honest with you, I thought of this myself when I, when I saw Mark in the hospital, but I didn't have the guts to say it. But one of his partner's mothers did. And she named him Tarzan Man. <laughs> anyway, I wish I had the guts, but to be honest, when I first saw him in the hospital, I didn't think he'd take that very well. <laughs> Uh, Mark's also been involved with the Indian Guides. Uh, that's part of the YMCA, kind of their Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts. And Mark was one of the leaders. And interesting enough, when Mark was in, um, in Pittsburgh, he, he was actually in the Indian Guides. And his name back then was Little Buffalo. And that's kind of a cute name. <laughs> but many years later, when Maddie was in the Indian Guides, Mark was the leader. And apparently after a couple sleepovers, he got a new name. And uh, they've been calling him Snoring Eagle ever since. <laughs> but Mark didn't just coach, Mark didn't just teach. He also got involved with these uh, organizations over the years. He was, he was uh, involved on the boards. He was involved in trying to be sure that these organizations stayed uh, fiscally, fi financially solid. So much more involved. He was also one of the founding fathers of the uh, Beach Health Fund. Above all, Mark is also a very caring and loving father and husband. Uh, he met um, Judy at, uh, at the um, Miller's wedding back in 1982, I think it was. 81? Well, they got married in 83, right? 82, okay, thank you. Not that that really matters. Um, and after that, the rest of it is just, it's just all history. 
when Maddie was born, I never saw a couple more happy. I really have not. I, I still remember looking at both of their faces. And they've been very happy and supportive of Maddie over the years. And they're proud, and, and, and Maddie has just shined with them. Maddie actually is also in Kennedy School now. Tux. He apparently also wears his tux uh, on the ski slopes up at the snow so, so. And uh, Mark has always said that a tux is always appropriate. So I would say Mark's an incredible human being. He's caring, kind, smart, fun. And Mark, those of us that count you as a friend, uh, are very, very proud of you tonight. Coach 
and major philanthropist to numerous athletic endeavors in multiple sports at the high school, university, and master's levels. And whereas his activities, accomplishments, and leadership skills most closely exemplify the ideal of service characterized by the life of John J. Kruger. Therefore, be it resolved that the medical community of Virginia Beach expresses its deep appreciation and highest regard. And be it further resolved that this certificate of honor be presented to Dr. Mark Winters and that he be named our Physician of the Year on October 23rd, 2019. Right, this applause may go on for hours, but I'm going to ask Mark to talk to us now. Let's get you situated and seated. I'll take these here. Oh, just... Okay. chance I'll make it through this next 10 minutes. <laughs> Me, uh, Meredith, uh, Meredith has been a, a, a best friend for, for 40 years uh, since residency. He was chief resident after me, but he, he quickly became the go-to guy for, for medical questions, uh, not just medical questions, but questions um, about living, even, even after residency, how to how to live a just and a good life, and, and how to how to raise a family. You know, we each we each went different pathways, we, different corporate pathways, and but despite being in competing groups, we remained uh, best of friends all these years. And so, how is that possible? Uh, it, it's much the same way uh, Tony Citrone and I have remained collegial and professional with, uh, at Bayview. Uh, a different model than, than, than what I joined, my practice joined, but I, I strongly feel it's possible if the, if through all that maintaining one principal tenant, uh, no matter what corporate idea or, or decision comes down across your desk, uh, no matter how much it looks like it'll benefit your corporate line, bottom line, or your, or or fellow physicians, it, it's a must. You can never harm one single patient. Uh, and that's what Meredith and I believe professionally, and, and that's why we're still best of friends. Um, I like competition, I and mean, competition is good. Um, so if you'll permit me to use this platform as a, a, as a plea to maintain ethical competition with your counterparts in other groups, um, use it for the betterment. Um, then this will be my only rant, and I won't. Um, I won't use this platform to perform a Robert De Niro and stand up here and <laughs> say screw Trump. And uh, I don't want to steal Professor Alexander's thunder. So. <laughs> the I, I do. Uh, I do. I want to take uh, uh, a minute here. My it's my pleasure to welcome and thank my special guests from the uh, Armed Forces. Uh, U.S. Navy retired Senior Chief Corman Rich McClellan, last duty here, support SEAL Team 18. Cap Captain Randy, <laughs> Captain, Captain Randy Peck, current CO of the Carrier Stennis. Uh, Cap Captain Bill Evans, uh, U.S. Navy retired or Brickover's submarine. Forces and Assistant Director of CIA. Uh, Rear Admiral Michael Wetlaufer, 
former CEO of the Stennis, recently returned to Norfolk where we claim them as, as home, um, in charge of things in Norfolk with a lot of initials that I couldn't begin to, to mention, but thank you and, and welcome home, Sarah. Um, Captain Tom Lang, uh, U.S. Navy, retired, XO in America. And finally, uh, Dr. Dr. John Bryant, U.S. Army Captain, retired, Airborne Infantry and Helicopter Pilot, Vietnam. Then, <laughs> then after medical school, um, Captain U.S. Naval Reserve, retired, flight surgeon for 24 years, including a tour in Iraq with Special Forces. And I'm also one of the founding physicians of uh, Tidewater Physicians Medical Group that I was fortunate enough to merge our family practice in two years ago. And thank you to all the other um, uniformed service members, active, reserve, and retired. Um, thank you for being here tonight, and thank you for your service. Ola Kruger, already introduced tonight, but uh, nonetheless, special treat for my wife Judy uh, and I to have, have you here tonight, and we thank you. Um, besides making John look uh, better than he was, you, you've, also, you've always been a major force in promoting the, 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 the best of our medical community. Uh, Judy fondly remembers um, charity work, uh, working on various fundraisers late into the afternoon before an evening event and uh, you would never leave to go get your hair done or your nails done. <laughs> You're such a worker. Um, tonight I'm, I am honored to have as my guest uh, Mrs. Rinda Russ and her son John Clark Russ. Uh, yeah. Named after his late father, Dr. Clark Russ, if you remember, the very first recipient of the Virginia Beach Physician of the Year Award over 20 years ago. Um, I can't think of a better way to introduce you like I've had the honor to introduce all of Kruger in, in past events. Uh, as, as, as just like the, the supportive side of a couple that jointly impacted our medical community so powerfully, the just like John Kruger, uh, Clark Russ was a great man, but you really made him so much better. I mean, thank you for being here. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, you know, I, I grew up watching Johnny Weissmiller of Tarzan movies, and I again became enamored with him as a competitive swimmer, finding out that he was actually an Olympic champion. So as later I came into some success as a competitive swimmer, I realized one day that I had actually equaled or broken one of his uh, records, albeit a couple of decades old and with non-turbulent lane lines. And, uh, but nonetheless, I was, I was somewhat impressed with myself. Now the next, the next time I tried to emulate uh, Johnny Weissmeller as Tarzan on a rope swing at the age of 64, things weren't as quite as impressive. But, uh, so, several months ago, I sustained a really horrific accident, and um, not to diminish the, the utmost appreciation that I have of being honored tonight, uh, I am just blessed and so happy to be anywhere tonight, and, and, with, my, and with my left leg. Uh, for this, for this I, I, I thank God that I was with my teammate and fellow coach, my boatmate and the double skull, a former physician assistant and, and retired life net executive, Mr. Perry Lang, who's here with his wife. Thank you. Uh, but also, also coming to my aid was a wonderful group of young rowers from Virginia Beach Rowing Club and Cox High School that I've helped coach. Uh, uh, Virginia Beach Rowing Club coach Akis is here tonight, who lives on Lake Joyce, came to the rescue, and fortunately he brought his daughter, nurse practitioner Emily. Uh, she was at home for a visit. Uh, God works in wonderful ways. Emily's a fellow Vanderbilt alumni, and 
she did her family practice rotation with me in, in Virginia Beach, and I, I tried to teach her some family practice, never got around any orthopedic trauma, but God love her regardless, she jumped in the water to relieve Perry as a human tourniquet, and, um, and I am forever grateful to her and Perry and, and all my teammates. Coaching and, and teammates and coaching fellow students is important. Uh, teacher and coach is, a, it, it is on the highest level of, of honor that I, I can imagine. I, it, it certainly is up there with being, being a physician or, or, or in, in the ministry. I, I believe it's a tremendous thing to aspire to. All of us have had that experience. None of us could have gotten through medical school without a love of education and, and, and a love for the teachers um, that, that got us where we are, such as the first colonial family practice attendings that we've honoring tonight. But, so with a compound fracture and three, three bugs out of Lake Joyce and a septic joint, so I spent several weeks in Beach General and Spa uh, under absolute marvelous nursing care. Uh, kudos to Bernie Boone, who runs a tight ship and has been a wonderful supporter of Kruger uh, for so many years. Uh, welcome to Paul Gade, who takes the helm at Spa, and, and thank you for the personal visit during my, my, my stay at your establishment. Uh, it was very much appreciated. Uh, always thank you to Mandy Johnson uh, for assisting the Kruger Foundation in so many ways, including putting this event on, uh, especially for helping me accommodate me tonight. Uh, without you, I wouldn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> as, as we'll touch on a little bit with a tribute to First Colonial Residency Program, you know, in the early days, we could, we would have to occasionally send our patients out to tertiary care centers, academic centers, to Norfolk, to our alma maters. How wonderful it's been to see our medical community blossom in size, but also the, the expertise. Uh, I have Drs. Brad Levitt, John Mankoll, and Bogdan Neugerbauer to thank for saving my leg. I'm forever grateful for them in my case, and, and to all the super specialists who take care of my patients, you know, the citizens of Virginia Beach. I, I just, I can't remember a time really in the last two decades where I, I felt that it was imperative to send a patient uh, out of town. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed to have my, my cousin Russ from Maryland here tonight, uh, a, a double cancer survivor, an inspiration to me, a teacher to me on patient advocacy and, and, and compassionate medical care. Um, how wonderful it is that I'm able to I'm able to pick up the phone and call Tom Alberco, last year's physician of the year, and, and, and confirm whether Russ was receiving cutting edge medical care. And Russ spent a fair amount of time at Hopkins. Uh, how, how wonderful it was to have an international le lecturer and a retinologist like Alan Wagner, our physician of the year two years ago, just four miles away to, to try and tackle my mother-in-law's uh, visual challenges. It's just, it, it, it's wonderful and I, and I thank you. Uh, now as, I'm, as I was writing this, I realized I just wrote myself into a corner, a real bad corner, because I am in no way in the same category of physician of the year as these gentlemen. Um, as I look around this room, uh, or I look at the list of the in the program of the prior physicians of the year, I see the state leaders, international lecturers, volunteers saving the water supply for a whole country, and then I see myself as a, a local volunteer, hard pressed to find time, uh, but happy, but happy to do it. And, as I'm, I realize all of you do a tremendous amount of volunteers who are just in your office with charity work. Um, I'm, I'm somewhat um, relieved of, of, of my angst uh, being up here when I remember a conversation I had with uh, Captain Coach Emeritus Bill Evans, who's my guest, another one of my guests tonight. The 
10 or 11 years ago, I was sitting in a, in a coach boat uh, out on Broadway somewhere, and as Bill's assistant head gopher, and I had a, I had a five year plan to become your head gopher, but then you turned me into a rower and, I, and then a, and your assistant coach. Bill, Bill and I were sitting in the coach boat and he related uh, about an upcoming reunion with some of his uh, fellow naval officers. And he said it was quite an impressive group of folks, a senator, astronaut, CEO of Boeing, you know, those, those sort of things. And he said to me, I, and, I, and I ended up, you know, coaching, coaching high school rowers. And I snapped back at him rather forcefully, one of the only times I've ever strongly disagreed with him. And I said, Bill, you probably touched more lives with your involvement on a one-to-one -one basis and on a team basis with, with, with these young people. So I am, um, you know, I am humbly going to accept this award tonight on behalf of many of the folks involved in just local volunteerism. Uh, no one's more aware of the time constraints on, on physicians as I am and the, the time, your inability to spend time with your family. I'll simply use this opportunity to, to remind us all that there's, a, there's great joy and satisfaction in teaching a single student, mentioning, uh, mentoring a resident or a colleague or, or coaching a, really a single athlete. I've been blessed to join a, a great group of family doctors, fellow graduates of First Colonial Residency Program, Greg Evans, late Greg Evans, Steve Stroud, and Alan Fenderson. Um, Alan Fenderson able to be with me with me tonight. Alan Fenderson, what I consider the top of the bar as far as I think a family practitioner with compassion and warmth and a wonderful partner on the on the level of James Charlton, his former mentor, and I am so blessed to, to have had, had him as a partner for so many years. I thank you, Al. Really. I'm doubly blessed to have new partners um, at, 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 at Holland Road Family Medicine with um, Joy G. Victoria, Megan Ronker, Luciano Bester, who couldn't be here tonight, and, and Matthew Backens. It's wonderful to have new partners of such caliber and such dedication. I am truly blessed and I'm counting on you to not, not let me turn into a dinosaur. <laughs> I also must thank our, um, our, our, our corporate level for Tywar um, multi uh, multi Physician Multi Specialty Group. I knew it would make it through this. Uh, the, the, the mentorship from um, Dr. Scott Danning and David Warren and John Bryan and Steve Northley from corporate has, has been a wonderful experience and has helped me grow as, uh, as a physician and, and managing partner. Uh, and I thank them very much for all their efforts and, and for coming tonight. I have got to give a special thanks to uh, Kruger Foundation VIP himself, uh, Rolf White, here tonight with rib fractures. I just can't thank him enough. When Rolf and I share a fence, a backyard fence, and when Rolf was talking to me years ago about joining Kruger. I said, I, I thought it was the biggest honor I would ever receive. It was a chance, we were already out, family doctor were already out of the hospital. I thought it was a chance to reconnect with the hospital docs who I admired so much. And I just, I, I repetitively told them that I thought that was the biggest honor that I would ever receive in medicine. Uh, to be able to chair Kruger for a number of years and to be sitting here now is surreal, but I have much to thank for Rolf White. And, and truth be told, Rolf White really can't talk over the fence. I can talk over the fence. Rolf talks through the fence. And, and also, you know, in the spirit of transparency, I'm not always there, but I can, 
Ben, if you know Rolf, I want a wonderful conversationalist and what a wonderful person is. It's okay. I can mow the lawn and come back. But I, 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 I thank Rolf for, for so many things besides, besides crew. Uh, the rest of it, I, the rest of it, I, I couldn't even script. But I have been blessed. I was blessed with great parents. Uh, and just a wonderful sister and brother-in-law. My sister Judy and, and Norman, both uh, attorneys and professors, who kept me out of trouble over the years, and all they got back was a little bit of help of trying to help diagnose a rash over the phone at night. <laughs> I, I love you all, and, and I can't thank you enough for so many, so so many different things. To get to my. Uh, to get my daughter Madison, who just entered the seminary, the love of our life, I, I cannot thank you enough for all the, all the many avenues you've taken us down in, in our family life that have been so positive and, and so enjoyable. Um, we, I, I, lo I love you and I can't, can't thank you enough. Um, to, to my wife, Judy, who has gotten me through so many different, not, not just this, but so many different things in the past that might even be considered worse than this. I just cannot, I, I, I can't put into words what, what Judy has meant to me and, and in, my, in my life. I put you in, in, the, in the same category as all the Kruger and, and Rinda Russ in that you you made me so much better that I could never ever thank you enough. So I I humbly accept this award and was wouldn't wouldn't but seriously wouldn't mind it if you and take it away in the, in the weeks to come do, if, if you consider what I did uh, is my imitation of Johnny Weiss Miller's Tarzan. Uh, I, I, I sincerely appreciate it and I, I humbly thank you very, very much. movement coming coming into, into play. Fitzhugh Mayo leaves beautiful Virginia Beach uh, and Jim Charlton and, and Johnny Mapp and, and goes to Richmond to form the Family Practice Department at MCV. Thank you. And Thank you to all the residents that we that came back tonight to, to honor these attendees. If, if all the family practice residents would please stand now. Thank you. And please, um, please hang around for a photo op. Uh, if you can, please. 